Ah, I've always wanted to invest in the big boy companies. You guys know the Amazons, the BPs, the Microsofts, the stocks that are basically going to keep going for many years to come. But the one thing that has prevented me from investing in stocks abroad is the taxes and charges you have to pay. As if there wasn't enough expenses investing normally. Now I've got to worry about these extra additional expenses. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what investing abroad actually really means how it will affect your portfolio because it will and more importantly how do i maneuver around this you, you know, know what you're watching, watching. DS, DS, learning, learning, learning. Whoa, whoa. in a nutshell investing abroad is no easy feat guys you're basically telling that country hi there country i'm not actually a citizen in your country but yet i want to buy some shares in a company in your country and benefit from your citizens who will make me money and my company money in your country by the way did i mention i'm not a citizen in your country <laughs> yeah that ain't gonna fly people and if the country that you want to invest this abroad stock in is on opposite ends of the table with the country you live in who <sighs> Let's just say you can expect some serious tariffs and expenses, guys. <coughs> USA China, ooh, Woo. yeah, to say the least. Oh, and there's also the added fact that the brokers that um, you invest your stocks in, where you live, basically, they have to go abroad and communicate with other entities, other brokers abroad, to buy that particular stock abroad for you. It's a lot of effort when you think about it. It's completely going out of the box, going out of your comfort zone. So you can understand why some brokerage um, platforms, they basically just don't offer this. Or if they offer it, they may have some stupidly crazy additional fees. And just to sprinkle some salt all over that injury, yeah, you're gonna turn up late to a party um, when it comes to new information being released around that stock, if not miss it completely. Because when you think about it, investing abroad is so many delays associated with it in terms of not just um, ac accessing the information, but also the time zone. Let's say I was to invest in a small company abroad, let's say like USA, for example. What would that mean? Well, the small company might not have a lot of information released about it. It might be like one news article released every week. So there's that that's affecting me. That I can't really react to. It's not got that much information, but there's also the added time zone as well. It's five hours um, behind, guys. So let's say like four or five o'clock where the stock market in the USA actually um, closes for the day and then continues the next working day, basically. Let's say something happens at that split moment over in the USA, which will be much earlier in the day. Yeah. Something could happen so valuable that I might want to react to a piece of information. I can't do that. I have to wait. So the next working day and that's a delay guys a big delay because other investors in that country in the usa may be able to benefit from that piece of information whereas i would just be like a sitting duck waiting to sink and this added together with the fact that news releases tend to be reactive rather than proactive i.e by the time you've heard it it's already too late it basically just brews up one heck of a bumpy investment journey with this or these particular stocks abroad. I know I've kind of been focusing on the negative aspects of investing abroad. There are some positive aspects like it diversifies your portfolio. It allows you to invest in the best companies abroad. It gives you investment, new investment opportunities to invest in where you might have been limited to a smaller pool in your particular country. And oh yeah, there's the fact that it allows you to grow in various global markets too. So yes, there's a lot of benefits associated with investing abroad, but you guys really need to know what you're getting yourself into before you get into it. You know what I mean? Yes, it may seem more rosy when you're buying your stocks, but when you're selling your stocks, that's when you got, you know, you got to pay. So that's when you might see it, guys. I'll be lying if I said it was all peaches and cream. But with that said, guys, I would actually still say you should invest abroad because of all the reasons and more like I listed before. What? Why are you contradicting yourself? Really, bro? Wait, 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 guys. Before you say I'm sending you around in circles, giving you mixed signals, um, contradicting myself. Yeah, let me explain myself. Yes, you can invest in stocks abroad directly, but you could also invest in stocks abroad indirectly too. And it's the indirectly technique that I'm actually talking about. Gosh, you guys are mean. But you actually can invest in mutual funds and ETFs. 
that may focus on a particular market or various other markets that includes that company or even country even that um, that you're particularly interested in. So it's not just, oh, I can just invest in one stock. Let me look at that one route. There's so many other routes that you guys can take. This way you don't have to take on all of that risk investing abroad directly. So this way you could get the best of both worlds. You could invest in various markets, you could invest in a country, you could invest in that particular stock or multiple stocks like that stock with that stock. You get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and then that way you don't have to pay an arm and a leg in fees for it either. All in all, you guys know how I feel about paying extra fees and extra taxes when investing in stocks. Come on, come on. It wasn't me. But I definitely agree. Yeah, it's important to know that your losses and your fees and your transactions and your taxes, all of that stuff can be compounded as well. It's not just the profits you make. But on the other side, you need to also understand that investing abroad diversifies your portfolio. So you can see pros and cons of both sides. Also guys, a lot of people just think, oh yeah, I've invested in one stock and that's, that's diversification abroad. No, it's not about that guys. It's not about investing in one country. It's not about investing in multiple, maybe stocks in multiple um, continents. No, it's not about that. It's about investing intelligently. Have to add that people. <laughs> it's about taking your stocks into consideration, the stocks you already have, or the investments you already have, and investing to something that completely balances that. That's what diversification is. And also you can diversify in the investments that you're that you're looking at so for example if you're investing in a property you don't just have to invest in a typical house you can invest in a flat you can do a um you can you can rent out that flat you can just flip that flat you can maybe invest in different apartments you can invest in different type of houses you can maybe invest in bulk houses you know the big fat house where you can fit like 10 flats in there there's different types of investments within that investment that you can look at. So diversification just doesn't mean investing abroad. No, there's other ways to diversify too. Getting that out there. But whichever route you guys choose to take, yeah, you've got to make sure you keep your losses down to a minimum. It has to be done because that is the foundation of a good investment. It's your favorite YouTuber, guys, Dami Solara. I talk about stock market investments, property investments, financial management too, giving you guys that consistent content, you know. Before you guys can go about doing whatever you're going to do for the rest of the day, say with me, like, subscribe, and share, people. What? DS Learning Finance. Whoa. Bye, guys. Whoa. Whoa. Ah.